Okay, so for me, there are four steps to trading success. And the biggest one is the trading psychology. Then comes the risk. It's uh, for me is number two. And then your technical and fundamental strategy and then quantitative analysis. So it's really in order of this importance as well. Without the psychology, we can't really do anything else without knowing that we are positive about what we're doing. It's not going to work out. And if we are risking a, an amount that's not a, the right amount, then it's not going to work out. Now, when it comes to technical and fundamental part of it, even if you don't have a good strategy, this can still work if you trading psychology and your risk portion is sorted out. So, but we're going to help you with the technical and fundamental strategy. Yeah, that's where we're going to focus a lot on. But I would like us also to have a look at a trading psychology a bit more than what usual retail traders does. This final step here, the quantitative analysis, that's when we start measuring our performance. We're not going to know whether any of these things are actually working if we don't measure it properly. And we like using the MyFX book to measure our performance. So these are the steps that we are going to try and implement throughout the process here at Pure Trading. Right, so the four steps to trading success is also emulated in our Discord channel. The top part here is all about learning how to trade and um, it has the lessons in there, the homework and, and uh, has extra material, the news uh, library, the books that I feel are important for us to read and then the tools necessary to succeed. But the part here when it comes to the training, to the trading, this emulates our steps to success. Before we are allowed to post really anything in our Discord group, we need to have our psychology sorted out. We need to mention in the group that we are feeling very good today, we're feeling positive, or that we are not feeling positive and that we are feeling down for whatever reason. And if this part doesn't qualify in your first comment in the group, in the Discord group, then we don't even need to bother looking at the calendar. The calendar is our economic calendar. What's up for the day? What news event is coming up? What, uh, what could affect the pairs that we are trading today or during the week? Are we going to get enough volatility? That, um, that is just information inside the the calendar yeah so we'll have the calendar posted like once a week or if there's something very important up on the day like on friday we have the fomc that will be posted as a reminder in there so it's like we look at these things every single day yeah psychology then the calendar then we have something what we call a weekly top-down analysis so for example, if you were interested in trading the euro versus the dollar today, then you obviously have some charts ready. But the way we're doing it here is that if you are interested in one particular pair, you need the weekly chart posted, then the daily chart posted, and the four hourly, and then the trigger chart. And we don't want, it's the same like this, it trickles down as, as the importance becomes um, or in order of importance. Like the weekly chart is your reason why you are trading that particular pair. So we don't want to see a daily chart posted or a four hourly chart if you haven't already done your analysis on the weekly. So you see, it's like this, it's, it's the exactly, we emulating the steps here. So that is what we are doing inside the Discord group. You guys will join that, um, either a new Discord group on your own, or you will join the, the guys that are already in there. Yeah, we'll decide that later. So the four steps starting number one, trading psychology. This is step number one. Without this, my message is just not going to be clear. You've heard all these things before that psychology is important and all of that. 
but it's really the thing here. Yeah, it's the most important thing um, for us. Yeah, I don't want any trades without you feeling great for the day. Um, how does it start for us? The trading psychology is finding out who you are first. Yeah. What do you want out of trading? I don't want to hear about financial freedom and I can trade at the coffee shop in my own time and on the beach. What I want to know as who you are part of the psychology is what it is you want to do with this money you want to make. Because we want to attach the money, the material value that that money gives you, the power that that money gives you, what is it exactly that you want with that money. So each and every trade that you take, every time you pull the trigger, you need to know what exactly is at risk here. Say, for instance, you are buying your wife a gift or something or your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever you're buying them a gift or you're buying yourself something something physical something that that has material value um attach that to your trades every single time you pull the trigger that is at risk when you're starting out if it's a pizza that you're going to buy tonight with your 20 dollars that you've made in the market before pulling the trigger, tell yourself, is this worth that? It, you know, it has to be worth it. So, uh, you know, the money at the bottom corner of your MetaTrader, that becomes like a TV game for us if we don't attach some real value. It's very, very important. Know exactly what it is you want to do with this money. I spoke to Andy um, about the trading plan and the business plan um the business plan is really a plan on what you want with once you are successful at trading so do complete that um andy i know we spoke about that or you spoke about that um to me yesterday but do complete that it, it we have to know you have to know who you are yeah very very important so getting your priorities first as well, very important. Trade your plan or plan to fail and treat this like a business. The, you, you, you must have the correct mindset before you start to trade, so, which means that if you need to go to work now, you, you know, your day job is started, then we can't start looking at the trades um, yet. We can build strategies around your time. You don't have to build your, um, you, you, you don't have to sacrifice your, your work and your livelihood for trying to look at the trades because our competition out there, they are focused. They don't trade unless they are completely focused. Their priority at the moment is whatever currency has been allocated to them. In a hedge fund, you have a guy who deals with euro dollar. Then you have a guy who deals with commodity currencies. Then you have a guy who helps them with a particular time frame. Everyone has his dedicated purpose. So we can't compete with these guys if we are too diversified in we in in our goals. If you have if you need to go to work now, concentrate on that. When you are trading, then concentrate on that. That's what our competition is doing. Um, I hope this message is, is becoming clear. Yeah. Do not trade unless you have your needs fulfilled, your outside needs. Yeah. If you need to catch a train now, if you need to eat, if you need to go and you too hungry, you, you, it needs the dedication and focus each and every time we look at the chart ready to trade. I'm not, I don't like uh, trading off from a mobile phone or even a tablet um, because it just, uh, it seems as if it's, um, you know, the coffee shop approach doesn't really work. Yeah. So g get the idea that it's a business and that when it's office hours, you are, at your office trading a dedicated space for for trading even if it's in um your truck like dalvin he is a truck driver i mean if he can dedicate his uh, alongside the road and uh, he can now dedicate his, um, a certain amount of time to trading then 
let that be it. What I mean is be completely focused, always have a particular place where you will sit and where this is where you do, this is where you do your work. Now, know yourself, the type of trader you are. Now, I know of courses uh, that teaches you how to um, find yourself. Yeah? And that's a dedicated course in itself. So here we're going to try and help you find yourself. What sort of a trader are you? Are you an investor? Meaning that you um, put some money in and you letting the trade run for more than, you know, more than a year or so. Or are you a swing trader, day trader, or intraday trader? We're going to help you find yourself here. And it doesn't matter where, what um, your time limitations are with the strategies and stuff that we will teach throughout this course. You will be able to find, um, you'll find a way around um, this issue. Yeah, because we don't want to jump from being a swing trader and then tomorrow you are a day trader, then the next day you are an intraday trader or scalper. We want to try and find who you are and hone those skills and then work at that. Again, this is what the competition does. We have a dedicated guy who handles a particular currency or a particular group of currencies. We can't compete with this guy who has 20 years of experience in that field we need to become the master of one of them and we will help you try and find out which one of these guys you are there was psychology then risk the for me the second most important thing you're risking the right amount of money if you're making a lot of money but you can still sleep at night while you're making it max gunter the guy who wrote the zurich axiom some of you um i sent the book to some of you he says, risk an amount that you care about. You care that you, if you lose this, you, 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 you care. But don't risk too much that there are dire consequences when you are, when you're losing. Yeah. Don't let this money be the rent money. You're losing the rent money. And don't let it be a, an amount that is so insignificant that you don't care if you lose it or not. Yeah, the, 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 there's a fine balance there. If you are um, in the Discord group, there is a section called library and there will be um, the books that I recommend and um, you can just grab it from there yeah, to help you with risk management. We will definitely do a dedicated section on risk management because it's important. But you can also, in the meanwhile, read those uh, books that I post in the library. So the approach for risk is a little different to the whole 2% idea that you that you always get on in, in, in a lot of other courses. Slightly different there. So it's, it's psychology is important. The risk part is important. And then the part that you guys are probably here for is the strategy and technical analysis. And then we'll also cover fundamental analysis. And again, in the library, there will be a book there. Um, I like Ashraf Laidi. I like his approach to fundamental analysis. I'm not going to go through fundamental analysis as deeply as we're going to go through the strategy part of it. But um, you can read up on fundamental analysis and my stuff as well that you see posted on the blog. And sometimes in the Discord, I will just mention it and go over it because it's not the be all and end all of everything. It just, it helps me with confidence. That's what fundamental analysis does. So this comes third in my list of the steps to becoming a profitable and successful trader. And then the last thing is quantitative analysis. That's the part where we use the my FX book, because we're not going to know if we are on the right path if we don't measure our, our success. And we need big sample sizes. We need 100 trades or whatever, yeah, to measure our statistics. We can't use, okay, the 10, we'll take 10 trades now. And if eight of them wins, and then you call that 80%. We can't do that because that the sample size is too small. We need a hundred trades or more. 
we need 80 good trades to um before we can ever say that we have an 80 percent uh, strategy yeah we can't you we we, we we it's not going to work the small sizes the bigger the sample size the bigger the amount of trades we put in our statistics the more confident we'll be if you have three losses in a row and um you are and you continue trading and then you get another win after that and then you see over time you look at your statistics you look at the my fx book how many losses in a row does my strategy allow yeah the next time you 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 on two losses in a row you you won't feel uncomfortable because you know that your strategy allows for around about three you know, it's just over time you will know what um, what your true statistics are. And also try to, we speak a lot about our trades in the Discord group. And then we will maybe latch on to an idea that somebody else had. But make sure that that idea really conforms to what you are doing. The, we're coming back now to our, to our, um, trading plan and business plan it needs to be your own so that you can know that the statistics are your trades because if uh, you know bob um, decides not to belong to the discord group anymore and you've been following his trades then the statistics that you are gathering is actually bob's statistics and we're trying to you know get your own we're trying to find out who you are what sort of a trader you are and what your statistics are yeah, so it's very important that. So we'll use my FX book for, for that, and we need a massive sample size. Now it comes to setting up the charts. You guys use various um, charting platforms like TradingView and, um, and different Ninja Trader or whatever. But for now, just as a beginning, I, I suggest using MetaTrader so that we can use... Um, the my fx book to gather our statistics just so that it can be equal across the board everyone uses the same and it, you, it, the same way of measuring and everything it will just be easier for us when we start um, looking at this as a whole so the way i set up my charts are like this i don't know if you're familiar with profiles but I have a profile for the dollar and the euro and pound and yen. So there will be the, the euro crosses the, or the dollar crosses will have the, you know, the various, um, I think about seven or eight crosses inside the, inside this pair, inside this um, profile. And then the euro will have its profile. I'll show you later on the chart. So this is how it's going to look here with the, um, with the profiles. The, also in the Discord, we also show you um, how to do the profile. There's a video on how to do it as well. So th this is what we know so far. We know we have this resistance levels here, and we know we have our support levels here. So the beginner strategy, and most of the, probably if you've done um, Mark Chapman's um, strategies and stuff, it mostly all, follows the same sort of a system where we are trading inside this range here yeah so what we know so far is there are various entry patterns now what i've showed you so far was the beginner strategy prices are coming up into a level of importance and then we have prices going higher And then when it comes inside or above the level, we have prices making highs and then prices making a higher high. And then we are looking for this entry there. So that's number one. Based on the divergence, RSI is not making higher highs. RSI is going lower as prices are going higher. These are all on the 15 minute. This is what we know so far about the beginner strategy this one entry method and this one area of importance support versus resistance 
We are not trading inside here at all. We're waiting for prices to hit this level. That is our beginner strategy. In the master's course, what we're going to do is we're going to take that beginner strategy entry. That's number one. Then we're going to have a second strategy to get ourselves into a trade. These are all triggers. We'll have the one entry. We'll have number two. We'll have number three, four, five. And then there's a six strategy to get us into a trade. Six entry methods to get us in. So we are still waiting for trades to get into this level here. And so far we learned this one and it's this uh, divergence strategy. And then there's another one and there's about four others there. The same thing when it comes down to this level. So that is one thing that you're going to learn in the, in the master's course. The other thing that you will learn is once prices gets here and you find one of the six strategies to get in, or one of your six entry methods to get in when it hits this level, then you want to go short. Yeah. The other thing that the master's course teaches is how to actually get into these trades coming down here, back here. So there's one to six or oh, five, I'm not 100% sure. It's uh, one to five or one to six different methods to get in here. Once it gets here, then we're trading more. Again, five different methods or six different methods to get into a trade as it's coming down, waiting for price to get here again, waiting for, again, this one of the six methods to get into that trade, going long and then going back up. So what I'm, I'm going to ask you quickly, the um, what market state is this that we are trading in, 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 in between this year from there to there yeah that's correct it's a range now how does prices get from one end to the next is it just a line Yeah, it's not linear. So what do we call the way prices gets from that point to that point there? It's not a line. How does it get there? Okay. And what, what other word do they um call waves what what's another name for for waves okay quincy's cycle okay i'm going to draw it for you maybe you'll get it what i mean yeah, that's right. It's impulse and corrective. And what is this impulse and corrective? What do we, well, what is the collective name for this impulse and corrective waves and the cycles? No matter what it's doing, yeah? no matter what we are. When we are here. There is no other way that prices is going to get up to here without there being some sort of a trend. 
without some, because it's never going to range and get itself there. You're going to need an impulse wave to get you there. And then there's a correction, like you don't, you don't get the whole linear thing. But the fact is, there is going, it's going to have to trend up to get here. If you start here and it continues to range, you'll never get up there. The, uh, no matter how you, you, you do this, it has to trend up there. If it's a bad looking trend, volatile or involatile, the, the issue is it has to trend. No matter what. Do you agree with that? That we can never range back, we can never range up to the next point. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it has to range. So it has to tra trend up there. So that is why when we trade, when we trade here, we were in the range and we are looking now we are assuming that there are points to the left and there is a setup and we want to go short now we want to catch all these moves going short as it's trading down so we have our first position in the market here with our stop up there, and we would like to add to our positions all the time, wherever possible, until we get finally get into the section here. That is the idea of the master's course. It's giving us more opportunities when prices get here. And additionally, it's getting it's giving us opportunities to add to our position as prices are coming down toward the next level. Do you see what we are trying to do with the master's course? So this chart is, it's in a live thing. It's something that is real. It's moved by real people like you and I, and it, it has a goal and um, there's a, there's an accumulation phase and then there's a trending phase. Yeah. So when prices are trading in the middle here, like here, then what do you want to do? If prices are there, you don't know anything else and you don't know the time frame. What do you do when prices are just there? Right. This is a this is a problem that we that we have. That's good. So when we are waiting for prices to get to either here our resistance or yeah. So when it gets up here. We don't care which way it's going because it all depends on the players in the market. It all depends on what they want to do. Yeah, we don't know. So in the middle of the range, nowhere land, we just stay out and wait. So our first opportunity is when it comes up here or when it comes down here. We start looking for one of our patterns. Then once we find our pattern here, our next goal is up here taking incremental profits maybe there maybe there but as it's getting up here you're banking some profits this part of it we're going to learn in the risks uh, portion of it we are banking some profits as we are going up here but when it's in the middle we don't want to trade unless we are in a trade year already we, we've taken a long position. Then if prices are here, we can start looking for an opportunity to go long. Because when we got into a trade here, our goal was here and it hasn't been met yet. It's in the middle. Even if it comes all the way down. 
With our risk management, we would have taken some profit off the table. So if it comes down and crashes against you, no worries at all. Yeah, doesn't matter. Part of your statistics. So it trends all the way up to, to that level. Yeah. So motivation to stick to a strategy or a technique. Yeah. It could be the money or it could be whatever it is you like. But for me, the motivation for like a trend trading sort of a strategy. Let me just read some of this um, if there's any, any questions quickly. This is why we have you here, Andy. <laughs> so you're trying to close part of, of an impulse and then um, yeah. We're going to talk. We're going to talk about all of that uh, later. We can ask questions, but it becomes more clear as when we do the actual strategy. But um, you know, I need you in this group because this type of stuff uh, I need to know. Um, you know where people are getting confused. So thanks very much for for those questions. But I'm going to get back to you. Yeah, where where that's concerned with all this um, technical issues. Um, what I'm doing here is trying to get you into the right state of mind where it comes to um, trading. I need you to be positive that markets does not range up to the next level. It actually trends up to the next level. Otherwise, it will never get there. So my motivation to stick to it is not um, or my impetus or my... You know, the, 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 the first people, the reason why I like doing it this way is because I have like uh, certain heroes that I, you know, that I base my whole strategy on. One of them is Ed Sakota. He's a self-taught trader. He started his uh, trading career in 1972. And then he was influenced by Richard Donchian. He's the guy who created that Donchian uh, channels he has this uh, whipsaw song we had um, six rules for trading and it's all about trending it says uh, don't be concerned if the, if it whipsaws because a good trend pays for them all and when you catch a trend you ride it up until the end this is us adding the to our positions and when you show a loss, you give this loss a toss. This is all Ed Sakota in his um, in a song that he's written, and it, um, he's got one of the most uh, successful hedge funds ever now. Yeah, and he, you know, hedge funds aren't doing very well now for the last few years, three years or so. But his hedge fund and many and and a few others are doing very well, and these guys are trend traders. And he also has the same philosophy when the, you know your risk is right, when you can still sleep at night. And when the price breaks through or there is a shock in a news annou announcement, then we do what Quinn said, do nothing. Your stops are already set, your strategy is already in place, just let it run. And when you get a drawdown or a series of losses, just stick to your plan. And pull the trigger on your entries. This is what um, Ed Sakota says, one of my favorite um, traders of all time. And then Richard Dennis, this is the, he's the actual reason I'm trying to do this. He's created the Turtle Traders and um, he, there was a bet that he could never teach anyone how to trade. So he took 12 random people and he taught them how to trade. And then from that 12 traders, each of them has created their own hedge funds and they are very successful now. But the thing in common that these guys have, they are all trend traders. Yeah, the scalpers are in the hedge funds. Uh, the high frequency trading hedge funds are not making that, uh, they are not very successful for the last three years now. So it's um, trending, guys.
That's what the answer is here. Etty Green, she was the witch of Wall Street. She says, just buy cheap and then sell. And then this guy, Murohisa Homa, is supposed to be one of the most famous traders of all time, but we don't we don't hear much of him. Um, at the time, he they said he must have made more than ten billion dollars. Um, um, but he, uh, I mean, adjusted for inflation and all. But this guy basically created the whole price action that we know today. He was the father of the candlesticks that we know today and he's also a he was also a trend trader so what i'm trying to say is that the mo what motivates you should you need to try and find some motivation because as you are following a trend it is not easy to hold that trend so that is what these guys could do yeah so what do we need to trade a trend now We've used our traditional candlesticks on our beginner strategy and most of the other strategies that we are used uh, that we are using now. We're using traditional candlesticks. We have the oscillator, the RSI, and then we have the volumes and the ATR. That's all part of our beginner strategy. But now for the trend trading, we're going to use a different set of tools. We're only going to use two indicators here. One is an exponential moving average. But this one exponential moving average is going to have four different settings. So there's going to be four automatic lines on your chart. The 633, the 200, the 36, and then the 12. And then instead of traditional candlesticks, we're going to use... Heikenashi candlesticks. But I'm going to show you how to do the setting up of the charts um, a, a bit later on. Yeah. This is how the master trader course um, looks. Um, you're going to get access to this as soon as we are done with our training, which is probably going to last between four and five lessons and then homework in between as well. So with the homework, I will. Um, in the beginner strategy, you sent me your homework as a, a screenshot and a picture. But in this case, we're going to talk about your homework. I'll give you the assignment. And then once you are ready, you message me and then we um, set up a time and we'll discuss your homework. This way, I feel you will be able to grasp the information a bit better. So the Master Trader course looks like this. This is where we are at the moment. We're setting up our charts. I'm going to show you that now. And um, I'm, not, I'm not sure we're going to have time for the top-down analysis, but that's what we need to do. And then we're going to identify the, uh, the existing trends. It's a bit different to what, we, what you already know about trending. Yeah, So it's not exactly the same. We're going to find our profit zones. And then we're going to do the, this is our very important, the trend following um, chart is our four hourly chart. Then we're going to go through our triggers. This is our 15 minute chart. This is what you already know, your RSI diverged trap. This is your beginner strategy. Then we're going to have a FIB trap and they, we have two different um, qualifying criteria. So that's two entries. Then our 786, and then our circle of liquidity and then a conservative entry. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six different entry methods. So like what, well, like what I said before, when prices gets to a certain level here, that level there, then we at the moment with the beginner strategy, we um, look for our prices coming up, making the higher high. And then there is a divergence. That's one entry. That is this one, the diverged trap. Then we're going to have two entries there. And this one, this one, and that one. So every time prices gets to this levels, 
we're going to have six different opportunities to get ourselves into a trade. And then we're going to trade along whatever trend we are able to identify. So we're adding to our positions to get back up to here. That is what we are going to do with the, during this period. Yeah, so you, uh, we can still use the beginner entries on a new chart setup. Yes, you can. It's going to be our first entry. Our first entry is going to be at those ranges. In the range, we look for a, for an opportunity. And then we want, as soon as we have an idea that prices are going short from there, we will trend trade the thing down. We're going to ride the end until the end, like Ed Sakota. So we're getting into the into our our method at the top there or at the bottom, and if when we identify a trend, we're going to ride the thing down. <clears throat> right. So we're going to set up the charts quickly for the for for the strategy for the for. It, it includes the beginner strategy and the master trader strategy. Yeah. Let me just see if we have any questions here. No. Okay. So I'm just going to go to our charts quickly. Right. So this is the way our chart looks <clears throat> now. This is our beginner strategy. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a range in our market, wherever it is, and then we want to trade. Our first trade is always going to be this one here. Yeah. Based on an excursion beyond the mean and prices to the left. So we are still looking for this. But to get <clears throat> to get the most out of this trend down is what we want. That 160 pips. Or if it continues to go down, 260 pips. That's what our aim is. So if we've traded here, we're not going to trade long ever during that. Until we are until we've reached our, our goal and a potential change in the fundamental analysis or whatever our reasons are. But we are not going to trade long and short in between this year. Our idea was already short year, so that's our only direction is short. This is how we add those guys <clears throat> in, Richard Dennis. This is how we add their knowledge into the market here. Yeah, we use their knowledge. Okay, so this is our beginner's um, setup. And then what we need here is our, we call this Heiken, pure Heiken. It's normal Heiken Nashi um, candlesticks. Now, the reason we're using Heiken Nashi candlesticks is because this is just the best method for trend trading. If, you're going, if you want to identify a trend, use Heiken Nashi. It's what it's meant for. It averages out the previous candles. It doesn't measure the, the it doesn't create the next candlestick <clears throat> the, in the same fashion as a normal candlestick. Yeah. So what we have on the chart here is our daily chart. We have our 633 period moving average. We have a 200 period moving average. We have a 12 period moving average and a 36 period moving average. Now, <clears throat> our top down approach starts with uh, the weekly chart. Now we have the same EMAs on all of the charts. 
our 633, our 200, our 56, and our 12. Now, our 36 period moving average is the most important moving average. It's our trend following moving average. We can see that our, when the market is trending, it really hugs the 36 period moving average very nicely. So with the help of the 36 period moving average, we'll be able to draw the trend nicer. Now, the way we do all this and the way we draw our trends is going to be, we are going to um, show you that later. Yeah. And um, you, Andy, you will get all this um, templates. This is the reason we are trying to use the MetaTrader because the template is going to be there all, um, in the group that you're going to be thrown in. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and it's an exponential moving averages. The reason we use exponential instead of simple is because it exponential moving averages takes into account the last of these bars. But we don't need to know the technical issues behind it. What we need to know is what it actually does. Each of these lines has, a, has a, its purpose. The 36 period moving average is the trend following EMA. If you just look at this weekly chart, yeah, I just want you just to give you all a test. I want everyone to answer this quickly. If you were to trade this now, in which direction would you like to go, long or short? Just based on what you see here now. Perfect. Does everyone agree with this? Quincy is short. <clears throat> yes, but I'm I'm bad and would try. Yeah, 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 that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. That is what we're trying to get rid of, um, Andy. There was another question by Dalvin. Yes, Dalvin, that's perfect. Look, um, Andy, you are 100% correct. This is why we do the top-down analysis. And it is there to help us with our direction and with our targets, and our potential entries. So I'm going to go over this again. So don't be, uh, don't worry too much about it, but just look at what I'm going to do. From the weekly, we start our top-down approach and we see prices are going down. So I don't want to do anything else but go short. I look at where prices are at the moment. Yeah, I have a line right there where prices are at the moment. So. Then I move my one line down to some sort of a resistance. I just want one line there. So this seems to be a resistance. And then we also have something called the figure. And we look at the price to the left and it's 109.40. So historically, we would like to use 109.50. So how do we get the line? We look at where prices pivoted off before and we look to the left and we see if there was some sort of price action there before. So we have our one, two there and we have a third touch there and we have a figure 109.50. 109.00 could be a figure. Let me just write down these figures for you. But don't worry, this is going to become more clear in the actual, in the lessons ahead, yeah? So, like 1 spot 0900, that's a figure. 1 spot 0950, another figure. And then 1 spot 0970, 1 spot 0930. Um, that's with the euros. 
And when with the other currencies, this would turn to a 80, and that would turn to a 20 instead. But these two will stay the same. But don't worry about all that. That that will come. That is also only just to get the levels right. Yeah. So I move my level to where prices are at the moment. And then just slightly down to the nearest point where prices has pivoted off before. And it has some levels to the left that is important. And I try and get myself a nice figure there. Then for my resistance. Now, in this case, the resistance is coupled with the 36 EMA. It's coupled with a trend line. Yeah. So on price, I move my resistance or my potential resistance up there. In between the candle bodies and the wicks. If I zoom this in, maybe you'll see it better. Like in between the candle bodies and the wicks. And this one is really corresponding to a trend line. And it has our touches to the left. And it has 111.50. So that's perfect. So now we have our playing field. And this is going to help Andy. We have a 200 field. A big playing field here. Nice and big. But we are sitting right here and we didn't trade yet so quinn says we need to wait that's quinn's strategy he waits and now he will know what he's waiting for actually because he knows when prices comes down here he's going to want to buy and when prices gets up here he's going to want to sell and he's going to look at the beginner strategy to try and get into that trade now that's all that we do on the weekly chart then we drop down to the to our daily and then this is what it looks like on our daily chart what else do we know here we want to go short we like going short here yeah but we would have liked going short there and we would have got short over there as well yeah but these are the two areas where we would have loved to get short and then we would have wanted to trend follow this thing all the way down to the next level so if we highlight this area here the, the area where we were get, going short for the first time it's around about say the first of november this is where we, we and again the setting up of the charts um is with your haikanashi on the on the right here and then you have your normal charts on the left here so this is our first of november and that is here yesterday um delvin asked what is an excursion beyond the mean <laughs> so we can go all the way down to 40 just to get this excursion beyond the mean sorted out here. So in this area, we are looking for our short. That's our first of November. There. Yeah. So we are looking to get short here based on our normal entry strategy. Yeah. You have one, two levels to the left and you're looking for a beginner strategy method to get in. Yeah. Remember that you have, you will have at the end of this course, six different methods to get into this trade year so the on the first of november that's your first trade yeah. do you see how i get my measurements here actually how i do my um, analysis using both haikanashi and the standard charting methods i use them both So our strategy is actually a, we're looking for a break of a trend line like this. So we've already got ourselves into the trade here. And we got ourselves in because on our beginner strategy or on our standard charts, there was an excursion beyond the mean there. In this case, we are also very close to our 200 period moving average. 
So there is confluence of events in this area. Nobody sees the 200 period moving average year. Yeah. So I'm more ardently looking for an opportunity here now because I have both of these things that I'm looking at. Okay. So our strategy is basically a break of a trend line in an area. So that is a trend line. Now you won't be able to do this now because I'm going to show you how to identify the trends properly and um, that, but the, 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 just the basic idea is when a trend line breaks, that is the way I'm looking to re-enter after I've entered here already based on the traditional candlestick. So I've already have a position going short in the market there, there. Then I'm looking for another opportunity to trend trade this down. And then the strategy says we need to go now down to our four hourly. So after our four hourly, let me just um, make this neater. So this now is our area where we are looking to trade again. Remember, this is the daily trend line break that we've done on our top-down approach, yeah? The trend line has broken, and then we are looking for a break of the trend line and a pullback. Now the pullback comes to the 12 EMA, and we're looking to go short, or the pullback goes to the 36, and we're looking for a short. Or if there is a trend that can be followed from the top here, we're looking for the pullback to go even further up. Yeah. So it's a break, pullback, enter. Another entry would be there. So we'd be jumping down to the 15 minute now on the 7th of November. There, we'll be looking in this area for a, another setup to go short. Yeah. In this area, yeah. So it all starts from our weekly chart with our analysis. So the weekly is only giving us the, it's only identifying our levels where we will trade off from. Yeah, so it's given us a playing field here so that we know the amount of pips that we are going to uh, potentially take. It gives us the direction and it gives us potential entry points and targets. Now, these EMAs here are also potential targets. So if we were going long in this um, example if we were here and we're going long for example one of our first targets would be this 36 ema and it corresponds nicely with the with your resistance line there so the top-down analysis starts with your weekly chart going all the way down to your trigger chart. And that is why inside our Discord group, we before we post any sort of entries, we first showing us the reason why you are looking at it in the first place. So what we are doing here is we are joining the you, you are becoming a swing trader and a scalper at the same time. Yeah. You, you're trading alongside the big players and you are then also scalping. So your strategy is not just a, you know, one trick pony. <clears throat> so 
So I know there's probably a lot of questions on this, and this is just showing you what the idea is all about. Yeah? In the later lessons, you will learn how to actually do that. <clears throat> Let's see what else there is. <clears throat> So this, <clears throat> excuse me, so you will cover the monthly and the weekly chart and then the daily chart. That is what we're going to do next time, yeah? We're going to go over the, the um, top-down analysis and then we're going to show you the trends and then the all-important four-hourly and then the triggers after, after that. So what we're trying to do is identify what you will do in, in a situation and what you're waiting on. Because no matter what, we are always waiting on a zone to be reached first before doing before acting. So the whole first section is finding where those zones are. We call them profit zones, where you're going to be able to make your potential profit and then how to act on them are these are these triggers so we're going to make you confident in finding the zones and then we're going to show you how to get into those zones what you can do as practice is constantly use the diverge trap for once you find a zone in, you know if you are more advanced and then you can do that but um I would suggest just waiting and following the course as it goes through. And then afterwards, we will do the risk management. How to actually manage our trades once we got into the trade in the first place. Yeah, so that was our top-down approach. So do you have any questions uh, based on what we're going to do and how, it's going, how we're going to follow I will follow the course. Okay. Look, they, they, I have a question for for you um, regarding the Discord. You can either have, we can either do a, a new Discord for, for you for, or we can join you up with the rest of the, the other four. I'm not... Um, I think I can put it to you guys what you what you want to do. The thing is with the other guys, you they, they might um, be talking about things that you're not going to know about until you've completed that particular lesson. And I don't want you getting the wrong information and stuff from them really. The um, so I don't know what you guys prefer. With the with the charts, I'm going to send you the um, template, and there's going to be homework as well. And then with the homework, I will give you each one a call individually to see how you've um, how you've come on. okay okay so yeah i'll start another uh, a separate group for for you guys um and then we will take it from there yeah so just to um just to go over the 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 top-down analysis again i think this is going to be something that we don't normally do um, retail traders don't do a top-down um, 
analysis on their chart. They jump only to the 15 minute or the trigger chart and they pull the trigger. So the difference that we have here is a, it's actually, this is probably one of the biggest um, or the most powerful parts of the whole thing is doing a top down, finding out where you want to act and finding out the direction with that weekly and then honing in on with, uh, with the daily and then finding your triggers on the four hourly and 15 minute. Yeah. So I'm going to, the homework is going to be, um, I'll, I'll put it in the, in your discord as a, um, as a homework section. And then, um, you'll, um, you can just read the, the assignment there, but I'll, let me just tell you what it is quickly. You're going to have to set up your charts the way I have it set up here with profiles. So if you are, if you have something similar to this already, then it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But what I like is US dollar crosses will have the Euro dollar, pound dollar, US um, um, yen and the CAD, those sort of thing. And then you have your yen crosses here. So you'll have 28 different currency pairs. Yeah. So we'll have our um, yen crosses, which was going to include the Swiss franc yen and then CAD yen and Aussie yen, New Zealand yen. And um, we go on and on like this. Yeah. Euro clock. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven profiles. And within them, you should end up with 28 different currency pairs. So that is your homework number one. Yeah. And then for each of these currency pairs, you have your normal charts here. And then right next to it, you have your Aikanashi charts. So it's a normal chart, standard candlesticks, and then Aikanashi next to it. Yeah. So um, that is the the homework assignment for the for the first uh, for the first one. And if you want another homework assignment, then we can have the call, show me what you've done. And then I will give you the, the next assignment again. Yeah. How does that sound? As long as you have, um, as long as the, uh, 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 we have our crosses all separated nicely. Yeah. Then you can use your trading view chart as well. But I'm just concerned about the, when we start measuring our performance and then, um, I like using, um, my FX book. That's my only concern with regards to, but I mean, doing your analysis and stuff. I mean, if you feel comfortable doing analysis on trading view, then do that. But I think if you're going to start trading and taking trades, then it's going to be best if we just me measure our quantitative analysis with the means of my FX book. The thing is, as long as we can, when we go across all these trades and things, I we, we say oh, it's um, euro dollar. Everyone knows it's part of the euro crosses, and oh, sorry, the dollar crosses. And then we, it's just easier and quicker that way. And you'll see inside the Discord group, we're trying to make things uniform there. So that is the reason for MetaTrader. But um, I'm fine with. Um, with trading view, as long as it looks like this. Yeah. And then you're going to, I'll send you the template. And then again, the template is going to be on MetaTrader, which means you're going to have to, you know, just copy how, how that works.
Okay. So you 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 know what the homework is here? Do the crosses like I have it here. Make sure you have to you end up with 28 different pairs and then also have your normal chart and then next door to that you have the the new chart in the Heikanashi charts. Okay, so I'm going to set up that group for you guys, the new Discord group. You don't you're not going to be put in the in the um in the first group. Eventually you'll join up. But then um for now we'll start off with a completely new group. Yeah, so if there aren't any further questions and then we can leave it at that for now. Okay, good stuff, Quinn. Okay, great. Okay, so I'll see you guys shortly in the Discord group, yeah? You can also type some questions and stuff inside there. And um, later on during this, um, it's not up and running yet, but there will be like a live room sort of a situation where we are going to do uh, analysis and stuff um, every single day on 28 different pairs. So that should be very exciting. But then that is once you guys know what's going on here and then um, you'll be able to, you know, assist in that. The new group, the new, this video is going to be uploaded, yes, into the new group. Yeah. Okay, cool guys. Thanks very much for joining and um, stay positive with this stuff. I know it's overwhelming in the beginning. It seems as if you're going to have more than one strategy and stuff, but it's all really the same thing. It's all we're trying to do is add to our position to get down there. Because the thing is, when you find a trend, you ride it to the end. That's the only way I know of making any sort of real money in this market. The scalping way just does not cut it. It doesn't cut it. Taking 20 pips here and there doesn't work. Okay, guys, I'll speak to you soon. And thanks very much for joining. Bye-bye.